Hello. Um, I thought I'd talk about the election results because the first past the post system has thrown up some anomalies and I thought this result that we've got is rather a good argument for proportional representation of some sort. Um, but there are good arguments for not having it, which is why it hasn't changed for a while, of course. And of course, we know that the current system benefits the big parties, um, therefore they don't really want to change it. Uh, let me explain what I mean. I've got a chart here on the computer screen of which the BBC did. You can go to uh, bbc.co.uk slash news slash slash election slash 2015 slash results if you want to. I'll put a link to it if you like. I don't know if they'll remove it at some point, probably. Um, and it gives you a list of the parties, um, how many parliamentary seats they gained or got, how many votes they got and what, what share of the vote. So, for example, the Conservatives got 36.9% of the votes, but they got 51% of the seats. That is, they got just over half of the seats, 51%. Out of 650, they got 331. Labour had 30.4% of the votes, and they got 232 seats. Now, what's that as a percentage? Just to make it fair, uh, 200, so that's 650. I've got my trusty calculator here. Divided by 232. Sorry, it's 232 divided by 650, isn't it? They got so they got 30.4% of the vote and they got 36% of the seats just under. But this doesn't really show you what's wrong unless you look at a dramatic case. Here we have the dramatic case UKIP. Um, they had 3.8 million votes, that's 12.6% of the vote, but they only got one seat. They got something like 0.15% of the seats, yet they got 12.6% of the votes. They should have had, um, on the basis of that percentage of votes, they should have got about 81 or 82 seats in Parliament. They ended up with one. They could easily have got zero. Um, the Liberal Democrats, Democrats vote crashed. Um, they got 7.9% of the vote and six, sorry, eight seats. On that percentage of the vote, they should have had about 51 seats. Um, the Scottish National Party got it about right. <laughs> they had 4.7% uh, of the vote and in fact they got, which is about 30% of the seats, but in fact they got 56. But it, it changes a bit when you look at the little countries. Um, Scotland's not quite so little, but um, it has a population about the same as that of London. Uh, another case in point though here is the Green Party with 3.8% of the vote. And they received one seat they should have had 17 on that on that showing um, I can't really say much about the case of, of say the parties in Wales and Ireland because it's totally different there um, for instance Plaid Cymru the Welsh party they got 0 0.6 of the vote and yet they still managed to get three seats the Democratic Unionist party in Northern Ireland got 0.6 of the votes and they got eight seats. <clears throat> but in those countries, it's different. You have to make sure that the, the parties get some representation in the country after all. Um, and there's fewer people to vote. Uh, so I guess the constituencies are arranged accordingly with a smaller population. And anyway, especially in Northern Ireland, you really do need to make sure that the various parties are represented somewhere in Parliament because otherwise they'll start shooting each other. You know. Um, as they have done for many decades 
centuries. <laughs> um, I'm not going to get into that argument. I've no idea what the situation was, except that uh, I do kind of wonder what the heck England was doing over there. It's usual trouble making, I suppose. Um, and there is one person who got half percent of the vote and one seat. And an independent candidate, not a member of one of these political parties. There's lots of other parties that got some votes and no seats. Um, British National Party, 1,667 votes in the entire country. They're nowhere. Um, Socialist Labour Party, Christian Party, Workers' Party, Class War. Goodness me. Yorkshire First, English Democrats. All of these got a few thousand each. Uh, George Galloway's Respect Party, he lost. Um, Monster Raving Looney Party, 3,896 votes. No seats. That's fair enough for the little parties. It's not important, really. For um, But once you start getting um, a few hundred thousand votes or more, you should really be expecting to get some representation. Um, there are a lot of people who I think would vote for, say, the Green Party if they thought there was a chance of them winning. In the past, there's a lot of people who would have voted for the Lib Dems if they thought there was a chance of them winning. Um, but not with the current system. The current system is called the first past the post system, and it kind of works like in a constituency where an MP stands for, for the vote, um, the MP that gets the most votes takes the whole constituency. Now, on the face of it, that sounds quite reasonable. But on a national basis, you can see that a party can win half of the seats in the country when they only get about a third of the votes. Um, in an election a few years ago in Britain, the Liberal Demo Democrats got 25% of the votes in the whole country. And yet, they again, I think they only got about eight seats. They were 2% behind Labour, who got hundreds of seats. <laughs> so, the difficulty with the system is unless you actually win in various local areas, as having win as in having the most votes, all the vote, all the other votes don't count. Only the winners' votes count. All the other votes, which can be most of the votes in a, in an area, don't count. So, for example, one MP might get thirty three percent of the vote, and four others might get the other sixty six percent of the vote between them. But those sixty six percent of the votes against the winning candidate don't count and it's a bit of a problem with the system um, an advantage of the first past the post system is you get fewer coalition governments we've just had one but generally they're rare instead you can tend to get one party with a majority of seats and hence you get some sort of decisive government an argument against that is that Maybe decisive government isn't such a good idea. Um, people are very stupid, and politicians uh, are, are no different. Uh, look at how um, our economy was trashed by the 2008 crash uh, by a party that, in this country that really took no responsibility for their actions. And that's probably one of the reasons Labour didn't get in this time. Um, Possibly having coalitions, which forces you to debate and compromise and come up with some solution that might actually please a greater percentage of the population, may be a better idea. Not that the population always knows what's best for them, of course. Um, but if we're going to have democracy, then we should educate the public properly and live with the results. Um, 
if we're going to have some sort of meritocracy or oligarchy or something, well, fine. But at the moment, it's supposed to be a democracy, but it's kind of a strange one. And uh, we sort of have an elected dictatorship, really. Uh, it, they, I mean, obviously, they, they bow to pressure. They, they uh, run polls and, and float ideas or leak ideas all the time. And they gauge the reaction and, to some extent, act accordingly. Um, if they really want to do something, they'll tough it out. But if they don't care that much, they'll just go for popularity within reason. Um, and that probably wouldn't change much under a proportional representation system. But there are different types of system. Um, now, there are there's the alternative vote system, but apparently Britain had a referendum in 2011 and voted against this. Two thirds of the public said no. Chronic system that was. I don't even remember it. I must have voted. I'm sure I would have voted in favour of it just for the change. Um, but uh, under this system, you you rank candidates according to your preference. You know, oh. Tories first, UKIP second, Green third, whatever you want, whatever you like, Lib Dems, whoever. Um, or Labour first, Green second, something of that sort. And as soon as one candidate gets 50% of the votes, or at least the leading votes, all the second preferences are added up and portioned out until one party gets 50%. Um, but we chose against that. Uh, there's an alternative vote plus system um, which is the same except that uh, it has some sort of um, added features for regionalism or constituencies and I don't understand what those features are, I haven't read about it particularly. It sounds a bit esoteric to me, but maybe they'll go for it eventually. And I'll have to read about it then and find out what it is. Um, I think, essentially, there are regional votes as well as a national vote. Um, anyway. And then the other system that's known and used in the world is the single transferable vote. You get one vote which you vote, which you can transfer to your second preference. So if a party doesn't win, your one vote is taken from them and the second preference is... A, a, are taken into account. Um, the advantage of that system really is that it does benefit the smaller parties a lot. Again, I don't know the full details of that system, but at some point, probably somebody is going to have to say, OK, we're going to use a system like this or that. And we're going to have to figure out, because probably it'll be a referendum because it's a constitutional matter, we're going to have to figure out, is it OK? Will it work? Or do we want to stick with decisive but not very representative government? Well, that's something to ponder, isn't it? Bye for now.